Stephen Harper with Tiki Fez Comics. Now, you might know me from some of my other videos like the underwater drawing, the outer space drawing, and our latest, the pirate drawing. But today, I've had a special request from Miss Lori Swilly and her biology class at Hancock High School in Kill, Mississippi. They asked me if I could show them how to draw a flower and be as scientifically accurate as possible. So, I'm going to give it my best shot, uh, going to do my best to pronounce the names of all the parts right. I know what some of you are saying, some of you are thinking, man, that guy sure has a pistol. That's where we're going to start. We're going to start in the middle of the flower and kind of work our way out, because for drawing, that kind of works best. All right, so like I said, we're going to start here in the pistol. Now, the pistol is made up of three parts. All right, so first of all, I'm going to start with the part, yeah, there's a bit of a stigma attached to it, because it's called a stigma. I'm going to start kind of in the middle of my page, kind of close to the top, not too close, you know. Uh, I'm going to start by drawing a squashed circle. There you go. Now around this, I'm going to put a letter C rolled on its side to show the top of the stigma. Down underneath this, we're going to get into the part called the style, and of course, I like to have as much style as I can. There you go. Uh, so what we're going to do here, I'm going to draw a line that curves down from the stigma. And then at the bottom of the stigma, we're going to draw the part called the ovary. This is slightly a, an enlarged part, basically just a circle down there at the bottom. So we've got the stigma, we've got the style, we have the ovary. That all makes up the pistol. Don't worry, we'll label these parts later. All right, now the next part I want to show is the part known as the, wait, no, no, uh, I want to show the part known as the stamen. Now, it's a little bit like if you were in the, an army a long time ago, like in the 1800s or something, and you wanted to charge, but the general said, stay, man, stay. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to start from either side of the ovary. I'm going to just draw a line that kind of curves up and out. And another one that just goes right alongside of it, curves up and out. Same thing over here, a line that curves up and out, kind of makes a gentle letter S. However, that's not the only way they could be. They are different shapes. They're also different numbers. So feel free to put more of these if you want. Some varieties of flowers have 10, 20, 100 of these. This part, by the way, known as the filament. Now, on top of this, I'm gonna draw just kind of another oval. And this part, is known as the anther. I didn't even know the question, let alone the anther. Now, this is where the pollen is located, so I'm going to put this little line right there. So, the pollen is on the anther, the anther is on the filament, there you go. The next part we're going to talk about is the corolla. The corolla is the part that attracts the insects or the uh, animals that help with pollination. First thing I'm going to do, we're going to talk about the petals. And I'm going to kind of imagine one kind of peeled back and rolled out so we can see these parts right here. I'm going to draw a line that curves down, one that curves down over here, and kind of just a gently wavy line in between. There you go. So we're sort of peeling that one back. Now, let's draw another one over here, a line that goes out and up, a line that goes out and up on the side, and then kind of just a gently wavy little line to then come back and join. Draw around the anther and the filament, all that part right there. And then up here behind that, I might want to put another slightly taller, higher up petal. There we go. Now, petals come in lots of different colors. Uh, as you know, I'm sure, flowers come in all sorts of different petal uh, colors. Um, so they might come in pink, or teal, or yellow, or just about any color of the rainbow. Now, one other thing I want to do with the petals here, they're not always just the same color. Sometimes they have two or three different colors. So sometimes what I like to do is kind of just put other small shapes down here at the bottom edge of the petals to sort of show where other color areas might be. And of course, if you're coloring this, you could make it all kinds of different colors. Why do they come in so many different colors? To attract animals, all right, to help with pollination. Now, down at the base of the flower is usually produced nectar. Nectar is a sticky, sweet substance that things like to eat, things like, uh, you know, insects and stuff. 
Now underneath where the petals are, there is a structure called the sepals. Sometimes the sepals look very much like the petals. Sometimes they're even the same color. All right, they sort of protect the corolla. All right, and then underneath here, there is the receptacle and the stem. The stem supports it all. Now, how does pollination work? Well, I'm glad you asked. And for this, we have to have something else beside the flower. We have to have an insect. Now, Miss Willie assures me that all of her students are straight A students, but sometimes you have to make a B. We're gonna make a B. All right, the way I'm gonna make a B, I'm gonna start with a circle. Next thing I'm gonna do is a little letter V sideways for the stinger. Couple of curved lines up top. Some stripes. And of course, since it's a happy bee, I'm gonna put just a little smiley face here up front. And I might even show a little dashed line back here to show which direction my bee has been flying around to get to this particular flower. Over here, I might put another one. I might just put another squash circle. Another letter V on its side. Couple of curved lines. Some stripes and a smiley face. Now, what happens then is that the insect, oh by the way, they're insects, so they need some legs. There we go, legs. The insect flies into the flower, brushes against the anther. That's right, just yell it out if you know the anther. All right. The anther is, of course, on top of the filament. When you've had enough wintergreen, when you've had enough spearmint, and you just say, whoa, I can't take any more candy, I've had my filament. Next thing is, the uh, pollen gets from the anther onto the bee, and it goes towards the pistil, all right? It goes into the stigma. Down the style to the ovary. These, of course, are the petals. The sepals. The receptacle. And the stem. That's right. Now, once the ovary uh, gets the pollen in it, that starts to swell and expand, and it eventually turns into a piece of fruit. Eh, depending on the plant, obviously. There you go. That's how to draw a flower. Hope it's helpful for you, Miss Swelly, and all the class. Thanks for showing us there, and I appreciate it. Thanks for drawing along. Be sure to be on the lookout for Quest for the Golden Butterfly out soon. So soon, so soon. You can just reach out and almost. It'll be here any minute now. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next time.